Uh, thanks so much for joining our special edition of Hashtag Webinar Wednesday. Um, this is our professional development webinar series uh, for the college access and admissions community. We're excited to bring you today's topic, college to career, opportunities, obstacles, and options with our special guest, National Lewis University, also affectionately known as in LU. I am your host, Brittany Cleveland, and I serve as the Senior Manager of Partner Engagement here at collegegreenlight.com, uh, where we support nearly uh, 15,000 college access counselors and 200 leading colleges across the country, providing free online admissions and scholarship resources for first generation and underrepresented college bound students. So, counselors, um, two things before we dive in today's topic. The first, Tis the season, the scholarship season, and your students are looking for money. We're here to help, and you all can email us at info at collegegreenlight.com or type in learn more in the chat box um, for more details uh, to support your students uh, this season. Second, um, go ahead and uh, note uh, uh, if you have any questions um, or if you would like to share your insights throughout the presentation, um, please use the chat features to your right or bottom of the screen to add comments or ask questions. If you need to leave early, we will be sending the slides and recordings for you to review afterwards. And please share with your students and colleagues. Sharing is caring. Um, and before you leave, please uh, complete our survey um, and poll questions. Um, tell us how we're doing. We'll be sending all that information over to our NLU team. Um, so. Uh, that can help inform uh, their presentations moving forward. All right, team, on with the show. Joining our conversation today and on screen is three members of the NLU's dream team. Natasha Cole, Manager of Co Career Development. Go ahead and wave, Natasha. <laughs> and Richard, aka Richie Morales, who is the Executive Director of Career Bridge and Pauline De Grazia, Director of Undergraduate Programming. And they are eager to share with us today their experiences at NLU and provide insights on the state of college to career um, for first generation low income students. So, with that being said, let's go ahead. We're going to dive into today's conversation. Welcome, team. How are you? How are we feeling this afternoon? Great. Thanks very much for having us. Oh, perfect. Perfect. All right. So let me go ahead. I am uh, doing a nice NPR fresh air interview today. Um, and let me start, uh, first start off with Pauline. Um, uh, you are the director of undergraduate programming at NLU's Wheeling campus. And I wanted to know if you can tell us a little bit more about your role and what drives you in the work that you do. Yes, thanks, Brittany. Um, so in my role, I oversee the recruitment and retention efforts of our first time freshmen out at our Wheeling campus located in uh, the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Um, I oversee a team that is completely dedicated to supporting students throughout the college access and persistence process. Uh, we're dedicated and passionate people uh, who really love serving a diverse student population that includes many first generation students. We have a firm belief that every student has a right to a high quality education. Um, personally, I am the daughter of immigrant parents and was the first person in my family to go to college. I remember that uh, feeling of um, not really knowing what to do, what questions to ask, not really wanting to ask questions and feeling that imposter syndrome feelings. And so that really drives me in my work in wanting to ensure that no student feels that way at the NLU campus, that every single student feels welcome and embraced in our environment. NLU was founded in 1886 by a woman named Elizabeth Harrison, and she was a person who was committed to the kindergarten movement, which is a strong and firm belief in the importance of early childhood education. So she went out into the immigrant communities and found that there were women who were teaching young children. She believed that these women had the right to access a college level education to become the best possible teachers that they could be. 
Um, so she went out and started Miss Harrison's training school for kindergarten teachers. And so that's how we got our start as a university. And we truly believe that this beginnings of our university of providing access in immigrant communities uh, to women at a time when women didn't even have the right to vote is really speaking to the mission of NLU, that we want to provide access to students, even those who have typically experienced barriers to higher education. Um, so as, as part of that mission, NLU has reimagined our undergraduate experience, and that's how our undergraduate experience got its starts. This program uh, began in 2015 at our downtown Chicago campus and then expanded to Wheeling in 2016. And that is such an impressive story. Um, so the redefined undergraduate experience is now in its fifth year, as you mentioned. Um, how many students are you all currently serving um, are in, them being served? And can you tell us a little bit more um, about them? Yes, absolutely. So our undergraduate college is currently serving uh, about 1,400 uh, students, and we're really passionate about helping students get to and through college. Um, as you can see uh, from the statistics on the slide, um, the majority of our students are underrepresented minority students. NLU is also recognized by the Department of Education as a Hispanic serving institution. So we're really proud of that designation, as well as initiatives such as trying to increase the number of minority students in STEM fields, as well as graduate programs and doctor doctoral programs. Uh, we are also very much committed to recruiting and retaining young men of color. We started a program called Eagle Brotherhood, uh, which is a program and uh, kind of an initiative that is really helping our young men of color feel connected to campus and creating a sense of community and encouragement among them to help each other on their road to degree attainment. Thank you so much, Pauline. And can you just tell us a little bit more about what sets the NLU undergraduate experience apart? Yeah, definitely. I feel like we are really attuned to today's college student and work really intentionally to meet their needs. Our program is professionally focused and we provide a consistent and dependable schedule where students only have to come to campus two full days per week for on-campus classes. Uh, we really pride ourselves on our holistic approach to supporting students, and our admissions process also supports that commitment to access to higher education. Uh, we are test optional, and we require a 2.0 uh, from your uh, high school GPA for admission to NLU. Uh, one more thing, NLU is one of the most affordable bachelor's degrees in Illinois, especially for a four-year private university. And we know that NLU is known for its education program. Uh, what else does NLU offer? Um, so every student follows a really clear pathway to their degree at National Lewis, and those fall into the areas of social and behavioral sciences, education, of course, and business and technology. Our course pathways really help to ensure that students are only taking courses that are required for graduation. In addition, every student has the opportunity to combine a, a major, a minor, and a concentration, really increasing their marketability upon graduation from NLU. And you mentioned that NLU has a consistent and dependable schedule. Can you explain how that uh, is a benefit to our students? Yes. Um, so students attend, as I mentioned, on campus two days a week, either Mondays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays. And what that does for our students, it allows them to be able to balance college with other responsibilities they may have in their lives, such as work or family ob obligations or their internship. And because of this dependable schedule, our students are really able to take advantage of more extensive internship opportunities, whether it's spending more hours in a day at an internship site or even a longer duration of their internship. And it's really a benefit to the student and the host organization. And this is really great. And I just wanted to pause and just let everyone know in the audience, um, we have made the slides um, available for you all to review um, and follow as we go along. And um, just a follow up, um, Pauline, can you tell us a little bit more about NLU uh, support and, and how M N NLU supports uh, students? Yes. Thanks. Um, at NLU, we take a really holistic approach to student support and the whole idea of supporting the student. 
um, in addition to the easy access that our students have to both online and on-campus tutoring, our learning supports are embedded within our English and our math classes. And this is actually how we can support our practice of placing all students directly into credit-bearing classes at NLU. Um, our student success coaches are committed to helping students achieve their academic, personal, and professional goals. The student success coach collaborates very closely with the professors of the students on their caseload, and that enables them to help ensure that those students are staying on track academically at all times. And my follow-up question to that is, um, and this is uh, a topic that is very um, uh, uh, meaningful for me, um, the student loan debt in America has reached over one trillion and the average borrower has over $37,000 in debt. How are you all addressing this national crisis? Yeah, definitely. It's really striking that the, the debt has actually reached over a trillion dollars. And NLU really saw this as something that we needed to address. When we set out to redefine our undergraduate experience, we recognize that one of the greatest barriers to degree completion was financial constraints of our students. And as a result, NLU made a very intentional decision to set our tuition to be equal to the full Pell Grant and Illinois MAP Grant amount. So for example, next year's tuition is set at $10,755. Our financial aid office also works very collaboratively with our students to support them in graduating with little to no debt, regardless of their personal financial situation. This is really great. And you know, when we talk about college access, um, one of the big uh, um, uh, challenges that we face is seeing students successfully move to and through um, college and in really seeing um, how they are using their education to um, help improve um, their lives and their family in their communities. Um, we want to learn a little bit more about um, NLU um, and, and what you all are doing to prepare students um, for their lives after NLU. Um, and, and to that end, I, I wanted us to just kind of turn the conversation uh, to Tasha and, and Richie. And Tasha, I'll have you, uh, have you start. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your role? Uh, sure, thanks. I am the Director of Career Development for the Undergraduate College at National Lewis uh, University. And that means that I oversee curriculum design, uh, career faculty, hiring, supervision. Um, I work uh, with closely with Richie to collaborate around the career milestones we want our students to have achieved in each year of their time here, um, tracking student success. And then I also manage our partnership with the nonprofit Braven, who runs um, a curriculum and mentoring program through NLU as well. Oh, very good. We love Bra um, Braven over here as well. And I'll provide a link just to kind of provide our audience um, with their website so you all can learn a little bit more about their model as well. And Tasha, can you just tell me a little bit more about what drives you in, um, in the work that you're doing today? Sure, so a strong first job um, changes economic trajectories, not just for individual students, but for their families and for their communities. And I really believe that the university has a unique opportunity and a responsibility to ensure that students have the opportunities they need to not only persist in school, but to be ready for that strong job after graduation. Um, and I think that as an institution, if we're bold and we're innovative, that we can really be a, a central, have a central role in dismantling some of the, um, the barriers to student success. I came to NLU because of their, um, their uh, reputation as being innovative um, and being committed to equity. And those were really important things to me. Um, I had been in traditional four-year higher ed institutions and I'd seen um, um, high potential students of mine who were first gen and who were low income graduating with jobs that weren't um, 
as strong as that they should have been and had accumulated a lot of debt. Um, and I really wanted to think through how I could be part of a solution that would change opportunities for students like that. And that's why I came to do the work here. And Richie, last but not least, let me go ahead and bring you into the fold. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role? Sure. My role here is the executive director for Career Bridge here at NOU. And so people think of Career Bridge, well, what does that mean? Um, it's really just the operational arm of what we do here to support students in their resumes, their one on one appointments, uh, their LinkedIn profiles, right? Because we're in that space where they have to kind of network through that space. And so, you know, our team really focuses on that, not just the one on one appointments, but also bringing the employers uh, to the space to meet our students, right? And, and kind of prepare them to network and make sure they brand themselves in a certain way. Um, and so that, you know, they have that strong, you know, first start in their in their career. And uh, I want to double back and ask um, uh, your passion and, and, and what is really driving your work that you're doing today? Sure. So for me, this is the, the exciting part because it's personal. Right. So when I think about first generation, right, I, I think about myself. I start there that at 18, I was the first in my family to go to school and it was like, OK, um, who's going to support me? Right. And mm -hmm. when I think about that, that day and that decision and that like aha moment. Right. This is an identity that I held for 20 years and still hold to this day. Right. And so when I think about how I was feeling and, and you know, thinking about who's going to support me, I started thinking about my family members. Right. And how did I get here? So if I was first gen. How did I get to this point? And so a lot of this when I hear this question, I think about my family a lot because I've had, you know, cousins and family members the same age as me but they unfortunately went a different path. And so I started thinking about, well, why is that, right? We all started from the same boat. We all had the same information. We all started from the same level. And it turned out that that access to information was super key, right? And access to things and people and networks and all that is kind of built the confidence uh, to, to move forward. So when I think about why I do this work, uh, you know, we have a lot of students in first gen that are here, that are here at NOU. Yeah. They came here at this doorstep um, and yet, when I think about what they need, it's very similar to my experience 20 years uh, previous, is that that power of access and networks and making it simple for them just builds that confidence in the, not just in the career, I'm sorry, in the college, but their post-college success in their families. Thank you so much. And, and I wanted to just transition and talk a little bit more about um, a, uh, uh, some research um, that you all um, have revealed to me that I find very striking and also just resonates with my story as a first gen college student myself. Um, uh, uh, per research um, and through our friends at Braven, uh, they have witnessed only 25% of 1.2 million low income first gen college enrollees graduate and obtain a strong first job or go to graduate school. Um, and this is a staggering statistic, but it's something that we all know and have experienced and have seen. Um, what is it that students need to be able to improve these outcomes? So I think one of the key things is that students need to have agency over their career goals. And so when we think about this, we think about helping students um, we need to listen to our students. We need to listen to why they came to school, what they want for themselves when they leave, what kind of a life they want to have, what kind of a career they want to have, and then we need to scaffold a program that speaks to students' needs. Um, students need exposure. That can mean exploration. They need to be able to have time and a scaffolded space to reflect on what they're good at, what they value, what they're passionate about, and then think about how this connects to a major that they want to choose and then a career that they want to have. Um, and exposure also to the range of careers that they might have for a, a different major. What do people do in these fields? What's available to me? Um, and then lastly, they need exposure to representative professionals, so folks that look like them, folks that come from their experience in a variety of, of fields and teachers who look like them and who come from their experience. And that's something we're very intentional about here at NLU. Um, and I think also helping students communicate the value of their assets. Our students come with amazing 
assets and value add. And so we need to just help students narrate um, their, what we call transferable skills, all those things that they're already doing by being full-time workers and, and full-time caregivers. Um, how do we help them narrate that story for a potential employer? Um, they are already showing time management skills. They're already showing those things that will make them professionally successful. Um, it's just about having the, the language that shows an employer that. Um, yeah, and, and so you know, when I think about you know what my colleague said, like I think about the systems about that, right? So yes, we're doing it, but how are we actually create intentional systems, right? So when you think about the term like scaffolding, right? That's very intentional of what we do, and so. When I think about like what students are facing, what first-gen students are, are facing, it's really the identity, right? Like sometimes that's a barrier in itself. That this idea of I'm going to school for the first time might be just utter fear, right? Because they don't have those access and they can't necessarily call mom and dad and say, tell me how to graduate from, you know, in a bachelor's program. It's not gonna happen. But what, what they do receive is a lot of love and support, hopefully, right? But we know when they come to NOU is that we're being intentional about creating this access to career capital in my mind, right? And so when I think about career capital, it's exactly what my colleague said, right? It's this intentional, creating systems of intentionality for these students to access people, networks, information, right? And build that confidence up so that they can see themselves in that space early, right? Not just in their senior year, but from the very beginning, right? And so when I think about that, that creating that system, it's also allowing them to bring their identities to the table. Right. And so we know that these students carry culture with them. And so when we think about that, how do we think about creating those systems where they allow those spaces and those things to manifest into their career choice? Right. So this idea of scaffold is very important because it's also very intentional. And so that's kind of what I think about as far as being intentional with the vision, but also being intentional with the actual system itself. And I really appreciate that we have an opportunity to have you all join um, us uh, today and really getting a peek into your departments. So I wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about how your departments are actually working together to drive the work. Um, yes, and this is definitely something that I think we would both agree is very unique about our work here is that we are able to partner so intentionally. Um, we've founded this kind of partnership based on um, a shared mission and a commitment to what we would call strengths-based um, advising and instruction, um, really thinking about what our students bring to the table, the value add that they bring, um, and beginning there. And then both of us have a very intense commitment to and belief in our students' capability for success. And that really drives everything that we do together. Um, we really have developed a system in which all of our the members of our teams are accountable for our students' success. We don't see career as being something that's siloed or just lives in a career office or lives in a classroom. Um, it is something that has to be done in community. We all have to be responsible. It's something we're extending to the rest of the school that we can all be part of this process for our students. Um, and then thinking about how we can draw on learnings. So we, you know, we continue to, to think about what is it our specific student population needs to be successful, and then how can we innovate and iterate to continue to do better for them. Um, I think we have to be willing to make mistakes. Um, I think we have to be willing to try things and say that didn't work. We're going to try again. We're going to make this better for our students. Um, so for example, an example of that, um, we implemented, we know that students need internships. We know that that's critical to getting a strong first job. So we implemented a policy that students would have to complete an internship course and an internship before they graduate. And then we realized that this process was really daunting for a lot of our students. Applying for internships is, is nuanced. It's, it involves networks, it involves uh, professional materials. So what we did is we created a scaffolded class, a zero credit class that would help students through this process. Um, and we had Richie's team of career advisors and my team of instructors working with groups of students together to kind of guide them through this. So through the learning, it was figuring out what are our students need to be successful and how can we get them where we know that they can get, where, where they know they can land. Yeah, this is great. And in my in my notes that I wrote to myself, um, 
I, I really resonated um, with you saying um, you all are creating courses that specifically really are oriented um, to our students. Um, what does that mean to you all? And can you all tell me a little bit more specifically what that looks like? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's really just moving to where our students are at. So it's thinking about meeting students where they're at, that idea of um, our students work, most of them work full time. Many of them have family members they take care of, they take care of siblings, they take care of some of them their own children. And it's, do they have an extra time in their day to go to a career office, to be researching or exploring or using online tools? We want them to, and that's great, and that's available. But we realize the importance of figuring out where students needed to be so they're in classes already, um, and it's meeting them there. It's having career advisors push into rooms um, and help them do make career meaningful to them that way and present to them that way and working together to fit into their lives and their schedules um, rather than expecting students to come to us. And that's and, a big part of our success. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. And I just want to dig a little bit deeper and really ask, um, how are you all uh, really defining what strong job attainment uh, means and what does it look like? Right, so um, NLU defines meaningful, sustainable employment, a strong first job, as a job that requires a bachelor's degree, that offers benefits, that offers an opportunity for growth or advancement, and that pays at least industry average for the role. So those are kind of our criteria for definition. Okay, great. And I think this is a really good segue for us to talk a little bit more about the model, right? Um, can you all talk um, us through the model? And as we're talking, I'm going to actually bring um, attention to where we are in the PowerPoint presentation, everyone. Um, if you are following along, we are on slide 11. And I will just bring um, attention um, and bring that slide up so that you all can um, also take a look at that model as well for a visual. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, it's very important to understand where the, the three-legged stool approach came from. So it came from what my colleague said, right, this shared understanding and talking it through that we needed to do this. Maybe they didn't know how, but we got to this point. And so what's really cool about this integrated model is that it encompasses like three main areas. One, academics and the actual instruction itself, right? We know that's where students are going to be. We know that's a place of learning, so there's an intentionality of creating career development and career readiness space for that to happen. And so I think when I, when I came in, right, and I'm, I'm on my fourth month, but I came with fresh eyes and that was what immediately attracted to me to this work here was that we had faculty and a leader in the space to open up the door for my team to do the work on a shared mission. So when you think about the power of that and what we've been able to accomplish, and I'll, and I'll share in a bit, that is extremely powerful. So when we go to the next tool, right, think about career coaching, right? And what that means is that basically our students, our, our students meet with our advisors and it's structured by program. So, you know, advisor meets with their business, uh, advisors to talk about business things, right? And so when you couple that with the actual class, you know, our advisors make the conversation very live for their students and what i mean by live is that we customize it to their experience right what are their stories what are they sharing and by the way hey what are you learning in class about your career development and your your process in this right and so that's the beauty of kind of this this shared mission is that we're able to have the same conversation but when we get to the career coaching part of it we're making that one-on-one -on -one in that comfort zone very live for our students and we're starting to see some like confidence which leads to actual results right and so when, and the third part of this are our employer partners, right? We want to make sure that our students are coupled with proper employers that understand their story. And this is, for me, a very important part, right? We, we know that we have employers that are willing to take on the student with an unpaid internship. We understand that. I think the shared understanding here and where we're trying to grow is how do we deepen those connections for our employers to understand our students' stories, right? And understand kind of where they need to be to kind of get there. And so that's a very important part. So if they leave, well, when they graduate and, and graduate from NOU, are they gonna get that same space to start off, right? And that's very important to us because we know that there are partners out there that exist. So when you come couple all these three things, we try to get at these ultimate outcomes, which essentially, you know, our students 
graduating are career ready and 75% of those move on and get that strong first job. And this is great. I, 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 I want us to dive in a little bit more um, um, in learning about the model. I want to just bring attention um, to the audience. Um, we have a poll um, that we would love for to get your thoughts. Um, uh, if you all are interested in receiving a little bit more information about um, NOU's undergraduate model, please go ahead and um, answer that poll. You can find it at the footer um, of the uh, webinar environment. Um, and we'll be following up with um, our NLU's team um, accordingly uh, to, uh, to, to provide you with more details. Um, so that leads me to my next question, um, team. Um, I really love how you all are putting an emphasis on this cross De departmental collaboration and really breaking those silos. Um, just going back into the weeds, can you all walk us through um, what that four-year journey looks like for a student? Sure, so we have a four-year arc um, that is organized according to the different ways that we want students to engage in career in each of the different years of their um, their time at NLU. And so in the first year, they're doing the exploratory work, um, those kind of strengths inventories, thinking about picking a major. Um, and then as they prepare, they're doing the really, the intensive skill work. So this is where you see your Braven course. This is where our NLU skills career courses sit. Students are networking. They're making their portfolio materials, um, starting to engage in networking working practice, um, and then they move into the practice um, section in the junior year, and this is where they're starting to apply for internships. Um, they're trying to access their first internships, they're doing those prep courses for that, um, they're doing job site visits and different kinds of launch week opportunities, and then as we launch, then we're thinking about that transition from internship into strong first job. How can we prepare students um, to be strong in their field? Yeah. Um, and then in each of those years, we have created very specific specific milestones that we want students to hit, things like creating a resume and then revisiting that resume and improving the resume as they kind of um, modify it from internship to first job. And so all of those milestones are embedded in events or in coaching or in courses so we're able to track student completion of the milestones during those four years. Yeah, absolutely. And the milestones are like the bread and butter of this entire thing, right? So you know, anytime we kind of do this where we can talk about it at such a high level that we, we don't get to, add to the actual action steps as a group. And so what I think about these milestones, these milestones are the actual glue that ties our work together between my team and Tasha's team, right? Academic affairs and student affairs. Like, think about that for a second. If you've done this work for a while, that's a very hard thing to do. Um, and so literally this week, our, these milestones inform what happens in the classroom, but it also informs my team on the employee relations side and on the advising side to have the same conversation. So it comes from the shared lens from the top, but then we, when we actually talk about the actual things that need to be done, this leads to my staff doing weekly roadmaps based on their milestones, right? Doing meeting agendas based on the milestones by year. And eventually, which I think is the biggest like aha moment that we learned is actually scheduled push-ins, which are intentional 30 minutes to an hour, weekly, bi-weekly, or whatever the needs are, where the advisors can come in the classroom and actually talk to the students about stuff. And particularly in, in whatever year they they are, they are in. So when you think about like how all this kind of comes together, it starts with the shared mission, and then also having this glue of milestones, and we're able just to kind of go back and forth and reassess our work every year, depending if the student needs change, right? But we know we're going to have milestones. We know we're going to have uh, roadmaps. We know we're going to have supportive faculty, and and allowing the career outbridge operations team have the same conversation with the faculty about the same thing, which is our first gen students. And this is great. Um, we're getting actually, we're at that halfway um, mark of, of the hour, but we're actually getting closer to um, the question um, portion of uh, our presentation. And there's a lot of questions um, from our audience members um, who are, you know, asking us, yeah, you know, in theory, it's always great. Uh, but how are you all really measuring um, in, in, in really understanding that the work that you're doing is really driving impact? 
Yeah, so that's a great question, right? In theory, right? And so when in theory and practice, and then we get into like, well, how are we doing? And and that's a that's a tough question sometimes, like how are we actually doing? But I think here at NOU, it's like a shared approach. And so the slide that you see is our basically our KPIs, and these are like our ultimate outcomes, right? 75% of our graduates secure meaningful and sustainable employment for either graduate school or into the job, right? That's very intentional, very high level. But if you look down from there, right? 60% of our graduates leave with a concrete post-college plan. And that's very different from a goal. What we're saying here is that our students will have an intentional plan that they can take a next step on. So what this means is I am literally going to go get a, a job because that's what I need in my space right now. Or it might mean, hey, I want to stay in school for a couple more years. I'm going to go ahead and get that master's degree. And I've literally applied to four or five schools. And same thing on the job side. I've literally applied to these type of jobs in these fields. So again, creating that intentionality and that streamlined experience is super key here. And then going back to the milestones, we're, we're looking to have all our students, all our graduating seniors, a complete 85% of their milestones. And the great thing about this is that, plus how do you track that, right? We have a wonderful uh, Power BI tool and a wonderful team that tracks this for us. And we're able to have these conversations on how to get better every year. And this is great. I, 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 I'm, I wanted to learn a little bit more about um, your role uh, as a director of Career Bridge um, Office, and if you can provide a little bit more elaboration um, on the resources that you all have um, in place to support students. Sure. So, what's what's the beauty about this is that in a time where there's a lot of you know budget cuts in higher education, right? Um, especially in Illinois, NOU has literally invested and doubled its size with um, the career development office itself. So we added four more advisors, we added more employee relations, we have, but we're making it now a, a career development lab as well, right? So students can come in and in the cafe style, come in and talk about their next steps and get ready for their resume, get ready for the LinkedIn program, all those things and making it very comfortable. And so we've added Focus 2 resources, we added um, another space for our advisors to, to sit in and on and on. And also, we also have a wheeling space as well, because we have students that, that there as well that are is a growing need. And so when I think about the intentionality of the investment in resources, that's what attracts me to this place, is that there's a very real understanding and investment that we want our students to be career ready. Mm -hmm. And you know, for a four-year private institution to think that way, um, that's, that's moving the chain a bit. So you know, that's what's the exciting part about this. And this is really interesting because you know a lot of um, individuals in the in the audience, um, as advocates, we are kind of working on the back end, right? Um, working with students right before they get to National Lewis, right? And so the big question for us is, what can us as counselors and advocates do to really support our our students um, to really um, prepare them um, uh, for success? Absolutely, that's a that's a wonderful question because it starts from the ground. And I'm going to go back to my colleague and what she said um, is that it starts with the story, right? It it starts with the story and understanding our students and where they're at. We understand that. You know, we live, you know, our students live in multiple different places and have different experiences, but when we allow them to have that voice in their story, and wherever that is, it could be in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, FAFSA uh, preparation, right, uh, for financial aid. It could be that first um, conversation about college and those needs and finding that right fit, um, but allowing them to bring those identities and those voices and those stories, right, you're going to dig into who that student really is. They might be great ap academically, or they might have some challenges, but what we know is that the students have a story to share, share. And so how do we kind of capture those stories to kind of inform the actual practice that's happening in the school, right? So bringing in right representatives that look like them, that can understand their story and say, hey, a lot of times I start my presentation with students and say, hey, I'm Puerto Rican from Humble Park. That's who I am, right? It starts there, and then it kind of opens up the door to like, oh, wait a minute, I can see myself there, so tell me how. and Maybe tell my parents and say it in Spanish, right? So thinking about how we have that conversation and set up the vehicles for that space is super key. And then, you know, and if you're in a you know um, a growing nonprofit sector, right? There's space there where there's a lot of mentorship 
and things happening and it's so connected to their students and their where they live right that's a big thing i, I think for our students is that that there's a lot of nonprofits there there's space to have those conversations as well and partner uh with schools like us to kind of support that cause and just let them know that there is a path and finally i would say know your research um 10 years ago in doing this work um there was no research on this stuff, right? Um, talking about undocumented students was not a category. Fast forward 10 years later, it is. It is very real, and that's a next step for us in, in our work, right? Um, but when I think about you know, how we got here, it was just digging into the research, and, and I'm confident that there's way more you know, peer, uh, peer review articles, and there's systems like NASPA, right, um, that is literally supporting the idea and having uh, posted up research and uh, conferences on first generation students like that stuff you can get paid for uh, get uh, funding for it and get paid for it and just soak up the knowledge and go from that theory to practice in your space and i love that you you talk a lot about you know uh the programming and how the programming supports students and really understanding who they are and really bringing that to light um and I can say, you know, our audience who's in the room, they know how valuable that career conversation and that piece is when thinking about college, right, in the next step. But one question I do have um, is, you know, there is some onus, right, um, uh, uh, that on, on the college, right, on the college end. And we know that NLU is doing some great work, but not all students are going to go to NLU. So I want to transition to talk a little bit, Pauline, um, uh, about the work that you're doing, right? And um, what should students and counselors know or um, ask of colleges in terms of uh, career as a part of the college decision-making process? And if you can um, go ahead and list a couple, three, four questions that will guide our, um, our audience, that would be great. Oh, sure. Um, so we definitely encourage, you know, counselors and students um, to be really informed and ask those tough questions of any uh, colleges that uh, the students might be considering. So I think it's really important uh, for students to consider how are colleges uh, connecting their students with career opportunities? And what does that process actually look like from the student's perspective? What is required of, of the student? Um, I also think it's great to find out how does the college assist a student who is undecided in their major. Um, we know so many students go into college undecided, it's probably one of the top majors, and with the career outcomes being so closely tied to a student's major, it's really important to know how is that college going to support that student on that process, or is it just figure it out you know, on your own? Um, another question I think is really important is how and when do internships fit into the college student's schedule at the university they're considering? And then also, what role do the faculty and staff play uh, in assisting a student to secure that internship? Mm -hmm. So I think those are some really great questions for counselors and students to consider. And those are some great questions that I will make sure to write down and um, follow up with uh, our audience, just in case you guys want to incorporate those questions into your conversations. Um, we are about 15 minutes um, from the uh, from the hour, and uh, we want to actually transition to um, questions um, from the audience. And we actually have a couple questions that are coming in from the audience um, uh, now. If 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 you want to. Uh, uh, take a look at the footer, um, the questions and answers uh, feature there, and enter your questions or vote on the questions that are already uh, in queue. We'll take a look at that. But first question coming up, team, um, is undocumented students, right? Um, so how does NLU uh, support the undocumented student population? And do you all have any recommendations on uh, ways to best support uh, uh, um, this community before they reach college? Yeah, that's a really um, great question, Brittany, and um, something that NLU, I feel, is addressing really head on from the moment that the student comes into contact with um, NLU. So we're very committed to supporting undocumented students throughout the admissions process. Uh, we partner with an organization called Dream US uh, to help students access college uh, since they're not eligible for 
you know, financial aid, federal and state or federal uh, financial aid. Um, so that's one of the things that we do and really work closely um, with the student. It can be a really tricky situation from the high school perspective because students are not, of course, required and to disclose and counselors uh, certainly don't want to uh, probe. So it does come down to us building, building really intentional relationships with our students. We feel like that's really part of our admission process is getting to know the student and work with them and having them know that NLU is a safe and supportive place where they can feel okay with you know, disclosing their status if they're comfortable to do that. But in order to do that, we can really walk them through the process. So creating that safe space at NLU is I think probably the number one thing that we as a university can do. Uh, we also have um, a very, you know, uh, limited amount of some internal scholarships uh, that we, you know, have a process for students to um, apply for. Uh, so those are some of the ways that we start with them, you know, to guide them through uh, the admissions process. Um, Richie or Tasha, is there anything you can add from the career preparation um, and guidance side? Yeah, I mean, we were just talking about this, right? So the, this is the beauty of this work, right? So, you know, we were just talking about, like, what what does the end look like for these undocumented students, right? We know that we have a system in place. We know we have a, a comfort, you know, a zone uh, and safe space for our students to come here. We recognize that. But, you know, we just had a conversation about, well, what does that mean for employers and how do students actually you know, get out there. And so I think that's the next phase of our work right now is being real intentional and going back to the lens, right? And going back to, all right, we know this is where our student's at, but this is an area of improvement, right? And so thinking about how do we bring employers, particularly maybe nonprofits, right? Might be a space where that might be that very comfort bridge, but also give that students that first strong start in their career, right? So we're kind of in the process of that right now, but we literally just had that conversation this morning. Yeah, so, and leveraging the resources absolutely. that are present in our community. So whether that's um, our partner friends, you know, who are doing civil rights legal work or nonprofit folks and education folks who have really been digging in yeah. to this on behalf of our undocumented students. and getting a team together to figure out how we can most productively yeah. support. And that's what we're working on now. And it's really exciting work yeah. and necessary work. This is really great. I actually want to have a cue and prompt our counselors at this moment. Don't leave yet. But um, uh, we would love for you all to fill out a um, our feedback survey. And I'm going to provide a link at the bottom here. And we want to actually get your thoughts um, on how you all envision um, working with NLU as a way to kind of think about how you all can collaborate um, and envision your relationship moving forward and really helping not only just the undocumented student community, but also just thinking about your student community as a whole. Um, this is one thing that came up in our conversations and um, they're really excited to talk a little bit more about ideas um, that come forth. So go ahead and complete that a feedback survey. And I'm going to go ahead and um, take our next question from Raven. Um, is there an NLU alumni network that helps current students get jobs and that come to speak to current students about their professions? Oh, I, I think Richie uh, would sure. like to take that question. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, like we're a growing office and that's the next phase of our work, right? And so I know that we're being intentional about that and we now know that we have a system in place to support that. So as we graduate these students and as we show them the love, right, our intention within, within the next year or so is to bring back those students to come back and share those stories. And, you know, even think about how they're sharing those stories in the, inside the classes itself, right? And so, again, when I think about the next step in this, and particularly when I think about alumni, I think about that very first first and second year, right? We're not talking about five years out because by that time you might be in, in life mode and things might be happening or you might be out of the state, but really targeting that first and second year. So those early, uh, early emerging adulthood students with that identity and that career capital and bringing that back to where it started, right? At NOU to support the system and support the cycle of networks for our students. Yes, and I just wanted to um, address the audience. There's a lot of good questions that you all are asking related to just kind of stats um, 
on retention rate, on success rates. Um, our, audi um, our panelists um, have had an opportunity to share um, some of those stats with you all in the presentation. So go ahead and continue to download that presentation. You'll find um, some of those stats on slide 13. Um, but is there any other place that it's public where you all um, uh, kind of uh, present those numbers um, to the public? on um, the success that you all are making, or even just anecdotes or uh, student stories that our counselors can um, visit for more information. Um, you know, I'm not sure if uh, the data is available um, publicly, but we'd be happy to share some of that uh, with you, Brittany, because I know that this uh, recording and information can go out to any of the counselors who uh, did RSVP for um, for the webinar, um, but you mentioned um, a student story and kind of walking through uh, the four-year progression, and I think that's what's really exciting about where we're at in the development of this new undergraduate initiative with us being in the, the five-year mark. We have students that we're now serving that are have progressed through our four-year progression of the career arc that um, Tasha and, and Richie spoke about and seeing those students um, um, coming together and finding those internships. There's been a ton of success um, of students, you know, finding an internship, you know, on their own with the support, of course, of um, CareerBridge and even, you know, getting to the point right now where they're in a senior year and um, able to be looking at potential job offers um, already. I know um, a student who is actually just hired as a grant accountant and is a, a senior um, at NLU. So it's really exciting. And for those that confidence that we're seeing of our, our students um, and having seen them when they started with us, you know, as kind of shy and uncertain and even having doubts along the way about dropping out and now seeing them with this secured, you know, position or on the verge of securing their uh, post, you know, post-college careers. Um, it's, it's just a very exciting time. Yeah, and we actually have like two really great questions that came in. Um, first uh, question um, is, how do you help students find jobs and internships? Um, and I, I will also want to say and kind of piece in another question, second question, um, are there some scholarships that are available uh, available for undocumented students at NLU? And, um, uh, and if so, uh, can you shed a little bit light around those programs? Uh, yes, I think you talked about how the uh, first part of the question was how do we help students actually secure those internships? Yes. Uh, uh, maybe Tasha or Richie want to um, give that a start? Sure. Well, in terms of the preparation, so we have an internship support class, a zero credit class that actually walks students through the process. And so then their career advisors can push into those classes and provide one on one and small group guidance that's major related. And the advisors are drawing heavily also on our institution partners. Then we have an employer relations team that's actually going out and making connections with um, organizations that want to partner with our students. So we kind of have, we don't necessarily uh, place, we don't place students, but we, uh, we create opportunities Absolutely. for students yeah. through our employer engagement. And then that process is brought to them through the classroom. Yeah, uh, uh, and just to add on what makes this very special is that we know that some students will we'll, we'll have a struggle kind of going through the paths. And so what brings us together is not just the events and the career fairs and, and the employer spotlight, but we know that, hey, there might be 30 students that need a little extra help. And so we have a, a very interesting model called the career success team meetings where we have faculty, program chairs, advisors, advisors and um, the uh, ERM team, our employer relations team, and data, right? And actual data in real time that we can use and put up on a big screen and say, Hey, what's up with these 10 students? What's going on? So not only are we digging in just in the internship, but we might be finding out that, man, something's going on in their family lives. Let's kick it back to our, our, our success coach team and, and let's figure this out, right? So the, the, the career development focus is just not on placing students, which is the ultimate goal, but we understand that these students carry a lot of things with them. And so that opportunity and that space to have that conversation is so critical on top of the faculty and on top of just the connections to have students and employers meet and talk and have students kind of build their brand with employers. Oh, and this is great. I think this is a good segue um, 
This is a little bit of a more broad stroke um, question that I think many of our counselors um, have questions about this. Um, not only just looking at NLU, right? Um, uh, looking at schools in general. What advice do you have for counselors to tell their students who choose to go to schools with low graduation rates or low employment um, or education continuation rates? Um, how do you help them not get stuck when they've already made that decision and they don't want to be that negative statistic uh, statistic at that college? That's a really great question. I'd, I'd love that's to, I'll, I'll start with, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay, that's a great um, question. because I, I feel that that's a, a really tough situation for a, a counselor to be in, knowing that they're that trusted resource though for the student. Um, I think it's, it's a difficult conversation to have with a student, but I feel that the counselor is in that role of that trusted person, especially when you're talking about a first generation student. I feel that they need the counselor to really in a nice way um, and a supportive way, share their guidance and information about how they feel about, you know, it's ultimately the student's choice at the end of the day, but I, I, I would really encourage every counselor to realize what a strong voice they are. We really see this all every day when we think of our um, admissions uh, pipeline and the students who come to us, it's largely based on a recommendation from a counselor, a trusted adult, and then also friends, but it's really that trusted adult voice. Um, so that would be um, my advice. Did you have something to add, uh, Tasha? Or? Yeah, I mean, I can go to you. Yeah. So for, for me, it's it goes back to the story. It goes back that we have stories to share of barriers and success. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, whatever identity you, you come from, whatever, but there is a story to be shared about barriers and success. And when you think about NOU, right, and its space, then it becomes, well, all right, well, I can overcome this. You've empowered me, right? You, you've given me a belief to go on because I just can't have this conversation at home because guess what? You know, my, my mom was just worried about what when I want to eat because that's her support system, right? That's the conversation mm -hmm. I had with my mom about like, hey, about college. Like, I can't help you there, but I can I can support you and uh, give you nutrition in you, right? So when I think about the power of story sharing and then connecting with spaces like like NOU and and other partners before college and showing them the steps. That's the power of the milestones, right? We're showing them the steps and how to get there. You put your own, you know, spice to it, right? And and how you see your students in your space. And that's the most important thing, the story sharing and the actual steps itself to get there. Because we're in 2020 and there's way more support systems. We'd like for there to be more, but we know there's more than 10 years ago and, and, and 10 years after that. So previous to that. Oh, this is great, and and I'm um, unfortunately we're at the top of the hour, um, and I want to be respectful of everyone's time at the moment. Um, I know that we had a couple of questions that we did not get to, um, but what we're going to do is kind of um, uh, pull some of those questions together and send those over to the NLU team and follow up with those um, responses um, at a later date. And I want to also let you all know um, that we are recording. Um, and therefore, uh, uh, we will be sending out uh, the recording and the slides um, for you all to review at your convenience. Please share with your students. Please share with your colleagues. Sharing is caring. Um, that is how we are informed um, and we inform our community. Um, with that being said, if you do not receive an email or follow-up email from College Greenlight, you all can um, please visit our YouTube page, and I just provided a link there. Um, it's college uh, YouTube backslash uh, College Greenlight. Um, you all will be able to access all of our archived um, uh, webinars and professional development series, um, and. In addition to that, um, uh, we wanted to just let you all know, if you do not have a collegegreenlight.com account, or you know of someone who would um, you know, love to learn a little bit more about different um, college admissions and um, financial aid insights, please have them visit collegegreenlight.com, um, where we're gonna keep you all informed um, and uh, offer more of these opportunities. Um, in addition to that, please, please complete our survey before you leave. Um, and we will follow up with you all um, 
we'll, we'll follow up with you all um, within uh, within at the end of the day. <laughs> um, all right, NLU team, thank you all so much um, for uh, this amazing opportunity and really putting together such a um, thoughtful um, and insightful presentation. I know there was a lot of work that went into um, uh, this conversation. Um, and shout out to Sarah, who's not here um, <laughs> on this screen, um, but she really did amazing work. Um, and she's also part of the NLU's team. Um, uh, final thoughts. Um, uh, hey, uh, if you all, NLU, have any um, thoughts that you would like to share um, with our audience um, uh, and how they can uh, stay in, uh, in, uh, in communication with you, please do. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think we have our contact uh, information up on the screen there. We would very much welcome partnering with um, any college access partner or counselor out there in any way um, that we can and making NLU an accessible choice for your students. So we are open to ideas. We're a very innovative college, as I think as we've um, explained. So we, we welcome ideas of any college access partner out there as to how we can help provide opportunities for the students that they serve. Richie, Tasha, any parting words? Uh, that's a good one. Sorry. No, I, I, you go. <laughs> hey, man, um, you know, the, 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 the work continues, right? And so when I think about the, the counselors, right, and, and their role in that space, it's just identifying spaces similar to NOU that get it, yeah. bottom line, right? And so I always say to my wife, who's also been a, a CPS counselor, like, I'm doing this work so I can not have a job. Right. And when you think about it, when we don't have a job, we've, we, we, we've done our job. We've done what we needed to do. But, you know, there's still more work and still more barriers that that students will overcome. And, and I think that this group is a big part of that. Yeah. And just the collaboration. It, I think what we really are hearing is a theme about pulling all of us in, whether it's the counselors before we get to school, the, the all of the partners the parents, everybody who's involved, that this is a collaborative partnership for all of us together. We're all responsible for these outcomes and we need to be. All right, team, you guys put it perfectly. Um, uh, thank you all uh, so much for giving us your, your, your lunch time. Um, and we uh, are so thankful for you all being so committed and passionate to the work. And hopefully we will see that ideal um, a world where Richie is out of a job. So <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, um, we will talk with you all later. And thank you so much for joining. All right, College Greenlight out. Take care. Bye-bye.